I don't need that for announcements. Good morning. Welcome to Tabernacle Congregational Church, an open and affirming gation of the United Church of Christ. And just so those of you who are here know, I did check the gallery view on Zoom just before I walked up here, and there are double the number of people here on Zoom. So there are more on Zoom today than there are here physically present. So after I do announcements of you all, um, I'm then going to walk over and see who on Zoom has announcements. So um, do any of you have announcements this morning that you want to make that are present? We'll take you all first. Nobody has announcements? Council this week? Council on Tuesday night. And um, all right. So let me go over and see if who on Zoom, because there's a few folks I need to catch up with that are on Zoom, so I want to check with them. So I see that Annie's with her dad again. Hi. Good morning. All right. I, oh, and there's our birthday girl. I was looking for her. 
Oh, <laughs> any of you who don't know, Dolores turned 90 on Thursday. And there was a wonderful party last night hosted by her kids, so it was, it was great. And so congratulations and uh, blessings on you. You bet. Anyone else have announcements? All right, let us call ourselves to worship. May God sustain us in the complexity of our humanity as God sustained David. Playing the harp, throwing stones at giant problems. Loving our friends beyond wisdom, dancing in worship. Singing our hearts in songs and longing for warmth in our old bones. Our hymn of praise is a familiar tune. I know the words are new for you, but I think you'll find it easy to sing because it's to the tune of This Is My Father's World. So those of you who are present, if you're comfortable standing, you can sing out loud with us. And if uh, uh, you're not comfortable standing, that's okay. And those of you who are at home and on Zoom, sing loud, but keep yourselves muted. We gather here, O oh God, and it's a joy to see the blessings of your gift of love in this community. Some gather in one place to offer thanks and praise. Some join online and we all find new hope for these new days. Oh, Christ, you call us here. We know your love's embrace. We're freed from sin and welcome in all those who seek your grace. We worship, learn, and serve. We join in times of fun. We gladly share in work and prayer. Together we are one. Oh, spirit blowing free. Oh, gentle burning blaze. The gifts you give help us to live in faithful, loving ways. The world cries out in need, and many cry enough. In this new time, may your church find new ways to find your love. You may be seated. The Holy One of Israel, the one who dwelt in a tent, the one who traveled in an ark containing stone tablets etched with the Ten Commandments, is here with us today. Let us open our hearts and minds in prayer as we hear again the words of faith spoken by God's people since the days of the kings of old. Let us pray together. God of steadfast love, when Israel was not a people, you made them into a great nation. When David rested from the labor of protecting and defending your people, you built him a house of cedar. You bless your people in ways beyond count and lead us to become shepherds for others, even as Jesus is our shepherd. Bless us 
that we may be signs of worthiness to be members of your household with the great saints that have gone before us. God in community, holy in one, open your arms wide enough to enfold us in your heart as we pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God's love awaits you. It has been lavished upon you as a gentle summer rain. Sometimes we'd say, okay, enough, God. <laughs> Refreshing our souls, opening our hearts, healing our wounds. Rest in God's eternal love. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from Samuel 1, uh, hmm? okay. Okay. chapter 7, verses 1 through 14. Now when the king was settled in his house, the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him. The king sent, said to the prophet Nathan, see now. I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, go, do all you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But the same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, go tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, are you the one who built me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off your enemies from before you, and I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more, and evildoers shall inflict them no more as formerly. From the time I was appointed judges over my people, Israel, I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house, and when your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a home for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. May God add understanding to these holy words. Amen. Thank you, Brenda. And now may the words of my mouth 
and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Where is God? Where do you find God? Where does God live? Does God live in a church? In the woods? At the lake? On a mountain? Anywhere? Or everywhere. In today's scripture, David tells the prophet Nathan that since he, David, the king, now lives in a house, but the Ark of the Covenant lives in a tent, he, David, wants to build God a house. But God comes to Nathan and says, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I've not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I've been moving around in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word to any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd the people of Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house? Well, I think about new church starts. New church starts typically start in people's homes. Gradually they move to a rented space, like schools or storefronts. <laughs> One of the strangest was when I was on the conference staff in the Southwest Conference. There was a church in Surprise, Arizona, the second fastest growing community in Arizona that had their services in the Riverboat Bingo Hall. A few decades ago, there was a movement of house churches. As a matter of stewardship, some Christians felt we should abandon these expensive buildings, meet in homes, and pool our resources for mission. In colonial days, when you think about how this country started, little groups of people in different towns are throughout here in New England, they also met in homes until there were enough people to gather and build a church. Several passages in the Bible specifically mention churches meeting in houses. The first house church is recorded in Acts 1, verse 13, where the disciples of Jesus met together in the upper room of a house, traditionally believed to be where the Senecal is today. I don't know about you, but I had to look up Senecal. I didn't know what the Senecal was. I'm sure Stephen could tell us. near the tomb of King David. And it's believed, at least by the early Christians, that that is where the disciples were in the upper room celebrating with Jesus. The church meeting in the house of Priscilla and Aquila is again mentioned in Romans 12 or 16, verses 3 and 5. Now, as I looked up, church buildings, 
One source says that, in fact, the source, interestingly enough, is the Guinness Book of World Records. <laughs> I don't know how reliable that is for our history, but it says the oldest known purpose-built Christian church. In other words, a building built specifically as a church was in Aqaba, Jordan, built between 293 and 303. The building predates the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem, Israel, and the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem in the late 320s. Now, I found another news source, which I had never heard of before, RT News. Look it up. I had to. RT News. In an article on June 10th, 2008, archaeologists uncovered what they believe was the first church ever built in 230 A.D. in Rehab, or Rehab, northern Jordan. Now, either way, whether you take the first source I mentioned or the second source, that means there was no church building, at least for the first 200 years after Christ's resurrection. No church building. So now we get to those days before the church, before Christianity, to when even the Jews didn't have a temple. They were called out of Egypt. They wandered around the desert for 40 years. They were in and out of various lands to call their own. But then David, the king of Judah, has now been asked to be the king of Israel, uniting the tribes of Israel. He conquers Jerusalem. He calls it his city, where he has placed the Ark of the Covenant, where they believed God dwelt. It had been stolen by the Philistines. David captured it and brought it to Jerusalem. David's doing well. The kingdom's doing well. So he builds himself a house of the best materials that the people of a thousand years ago knew. Cedar. Actually, 3,000 years ago. It was a thousand years before Christ. <laughs> and he thinks, if I have this grand house, surely God should have a grand house as well and not be living in that tent. Also called a tabernacle, by the way. And if you look up what tabernacle means, it's any temporary dwelling, hut, tent, or booth. Uh, that doesn't sound like Tabernacle Church to me. I don't think we've been very temporary for the last 200 years. Hmm. Anyway, in those days, the prophet was the direct line to God. And the prophet brings this word to David. God says... I have not lived in a house since that day. I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I've been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. In other words, God is saying to David, how presumptuous of you to think that I need a house in the first place. And second, that you should be the one to do it. Now remember, each week, Reverend Elizabeth and I have been reminding you that despite all the other crazy and even wrong things that David does, David has incredible faith. Which is why when David first told Nathan he wanted to build a house for God, Nathan's first reaction was, go, do what you have in mind, 
the Lord is with you. And up until now, David pretty much had been able to get whatever he wanted. He married into the royal family by killing Goliath. He served as King Saul's general. And the people clamored for David to be king when Saul was killed in battle. You know the expression, power corrupts? This is a teaser and spoiler alert. Next week, we're going to have the story of Beersheba, where David lusted after another man's wife, has her husband killed so he can marry her. And then in two weeks, Nathan arrives on the scene again and confronts David for what he has done. A gotcha moment. But I get ahead of myself. Back to today's story. Because he was the king, David thought he could do anything he wanted, but God puts him in his place by sending Nathan to say, when your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you who shall come forth from your body and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. So, David isn't going to get to build a house for God. But God says David's son, who we later find out is Solomon, who will succeed him as king, will build the temple. So here's our lessons for today. No matter how strong your faith is, because who could have stronger faith than David? You don't always get what you want. Somebody started singing a song in Bible study on Wednesday night. <laughs> Even if you think you're doing it because you think that's what God wants. Boy, even we pastors have to learn that one. God doesn't need a house. We often refer to our church as God's house, do we not? I've heard parents tell their children, don't make that noise, don't run, don't act silly or fool around because this is God's house. I don't know what kind of message that gives about God. And is it God's house? Or is it the house our forefathers and foremothers built because they wanted a place to gather and be together? Does it truly belong to us if it's God's house? We don't have a Nathan to tell us and answer that. But we've prayed and prayed. We have studied and studied. We have talked and talked. And we've discerned that in the 21st century, God may want us to do something else with God's house. God has love for all God's people. As far as we can tell, Jesus never had a house. He traveled around doing the work of the gospel, and that's what he commanded us to do. There is plenty of work to do right here in Salem. We can still gather and meet together to be one with another, to praise the Lord, worship God, but it doesn't have to look like it did in 1924 when this building was dedicated. We don't need the entire building to do that. God is calling us to a new day 
when we may partner with the community and serve the community by putting more of this building to use than just protecting the ark on a Sunday morning. We will do that, but in a smaller space and allow God to put the rest of this building out for the needs of the community. After all, again, whose house is this? Is it our house or is it God's house? Let's pray that we will always seek to listen to the Holy Spirit guiding us, speaking to us, as Nathan did to David, so that we can indeed discern what is best for us and the generations to come in the name of Christ. Amen. So as we turn to our time of prayers and concerns, I'm going to go over where actually the majority of our congregation is this morning on Zoom. If you have a prayer request, I'll turn around and look this way too. So just raise your hand or shout out. Any other prayers this morning? I think we continue to pray for those families affected by the uh, building that collapsed in Florida, um, for the bodies that have been recovered, for I think one or two that are still missing, and for the grief that all of them are experiencing and uh, all that was caused by that. We lift this prayer to God. I think we also would pray for those parts of the world that are experiencing flooding even worse than we are, if you've seen the news. And so for those families, for those communities, we lift these prayers to God. Let us pray. Master Builder, God who has constructed our lives for your very purpose, we confess that we too often built the wrong things. We have used tools from the master's house, ones that failed to dismantle the darkness. We have focused on building our legacies and have missed opportunities to share yours. We have built walls when we should have built bridges. By the places we live, learn, work, shop, and go for entertainment, we have contributed to building powers and principalities that we should work toward deconstructing and demolishing. Sometimes our building has displaced the homes and disrupted the neighborhoods of people whose voices did not matter to those in positions of power. Knock down the walls of our minds and renovate our imaginations that we may see your plans as better than our own. When your blueprints are bolder than our flawed floor plans, help us to trust you. We offer you these prayers in the name of the carpenter who built the church and it is in his body we find our lives. Amen. And our hymn of Sending Forth is another one by Carolyn Winfrey Gillette. She puts such great contemporary words to old familiar tunes. So this one is to the tune of My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. I think you'll recognize it. I invite you all to Sing along. Uh, those of you who are present, if you are comfortable standing and want to, you may. If you want to remain seated, you may. And those on Zoom, keep muted, but sing out loud.
God, when you called our church by grace, this land was such a different place. Yet what you spoke remains the same. I'll be with you, go in my name. Your promise is for everyone. You call us here, your word is true. We'll be a faithful church for you. Lord Jesus Christ, our cornerstone, you meet us here, we're not alone. Through times of joy, through tears long wept, you are God's love, God's promise kept. Your promise is for everyone, you love us all, you make us new, we'll be a loving church for you. O oh, Holy Spirit, wind and flame, you send us out in Jesus' name. You give us gifts that we may share God's love and justice everywhere. Your promise is for everyone. You give us gifts and work to do. We'll be a serving church for you. My weekly reminder that especially for those of you on Zoom to mail your checks in or to put them through the mail slot on Federal Street or use the donate button on our website, which all of you are welcome to do as well that are present. Um, but uh, we will now hear that Jesus taught us. When we welcome the stranger, we create a new community where all are one in God. Let us continue the work that Jesus started by welcoming the strangers who cross our paths, knowing that God is with us and protects us as we pursue our ministries of healing and hope. Proclaim God's glory through all you do this week. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>